Hello everyone, my name is Gerald. Welcome to Studio Ploy. Today's makeover is the beginning of a new season for Studio Bloy. A lot of new and exciting projects are coming. We have a law office that we finished in three weeks and a modern farmhouse studio unit, just to name a few. All these plus more are coming in the next few weeks and months. But before that, the season starter is my current favorite for a one bedroom makeover that I have done so far. The previous owner of this property are very dear to my heart, so I wanted somehow to dedicate it to them. But don't get me wrong, the new owner of this property has given me a free hand in creating the whole vibe and style for the unit with request of making it cozy, minimalist, and most especially would appeal to the target market, which are young professionals, while at the same time complement the owner's personality. I mentioned target market because the unit will be up for rent after the makeover. Another consideration is the budget. I have to make it appealing for renters without breaking the bank while taking into consideration the total renovation cost with better chance for ROI or return of investment. By the way, there won't be any major alteration to the unit and will be mostly aesthetic upgrade. Moving to the design process, I would normally ask for the actual photos and the as-built plan in creating the space plan for the unit. But since I have been able to do actual measurements beforehand, I already have the data on its dimension and the status of the unit. The owner wanted to keep the open layout, so I needed to fit in a living and dining space within a more or less 18 square meter space. That means separating a combined living and dining without a divider and create a more balanced and cohesive room. The challenge is on this area. I wanted to place the dining here, but the space is too narrow and it will also leave space near the kitchen area empty. Next step is organizing my ideas. I don't know if you've noticed it, but in most of my videos, I would always mention mood boards. It served many purpose and help me create a more cohesive looking space. It keeps the style and aesthetic of the project consistent with the client's goal and expectations. I can say the secret is always on the mood board. Before, I would screenshot photos from Pinterest and other sources, then create a collage or on my Word app. No kidding, I have to cut, copy, paste, and position photos, which are irritatingly inconvenient and takes a lot of time before upgrading to a more practical app. Recently, I came across this amazing program called Milanote. Melanote is a place to collect and organize all of your thoughts and ideas, put together a checklist of everything that needs to be done, visualize and gather inspiration, and set a visual direction for a project. Melanote gives you a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. And when you're ready to share your work, you can invite your colleagues and clients, gather important feedback, and collaborate with them in real time. And starting a project is easy with over a hundred built-in templates for designers, filmmakers, photographers, and more. For this project, I gather all photos that I feel would best describe or represent the overall style of the space, also with some design elements that I need for the space. I particularly love that I can put links to the specific items, write notes if I need some revisions, or simply to remind me of some details. So there's no need for me to have another application for my list of suppliers as it is integrated already to the mood board, making design process more fun and easy. Finally, Melanode is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start your next creative project. Going back, it only took me up to two revisions with most of the changes on the capacity and the choices of appliances. And after getting the owner's approval and the necessary permits from the building admin, I now proceeded with the renovation. 
Our schedule for the first day is to do paint swatching. I would normally purchase two to three paints to choose from, then apply it on the actual wall. I do this to each and every project because depending on the location and the amount and type of artificial light in a certain space impacts how the color looks. For the first time, our main color for this project would be light gray beige from the usual white paint. I've purchased three different tones of gray. First is F160, the lightest, then 2919P, the darkest among the three, and lastly G154, which is kinda in the middle. I went for 2919P, which Davis calls silver screen. By the way, I had to see this the following day during daytime to see how it looks like in the morning before deciding for 2919p. This unit is not brand new and the previous owner had it rented out, that's the reason for some damaged paints. We already have a heater from the previous owner which we will keep but the mirror will be replaced and we are also going to be installing a shower enclosure then repaint the entire bathroom. With the kitchen, we already have the range hood so we're only adding in a brand new range oven. I don't know what they did with this wall but we are gonna rectify this and also add a backsplash. The previous renter went all the way in covering the windows with frosted glass film. Though it offers privacy and filters light, we are removing it as it looks tacky. The AC provision was also left uncovered and is one of the major reasons for some bubbling of paints. I don't know what they hang on this area but this was super high. The lights were still the deliverable and we're replacing it with a much better looking light that doesn't look like a sore thumb. Overall, the unit needs some brand new paint and Fortunately, no leak was detected because I came in late due to heavy rains and at this time it would be hard for me to leave the place as it's absolutely bucketing down which also means heavy traffic. I had to wait a little until raining eased off. I decided to start peeling off those bubbling paints. The bathroom and the living had the most damaged parts. I also removed a lot of these adhesive hooks even on this part of the beam. The following day, I started to apply wall putty to the damaged areas. The product I'm using here is Boss's All-Purpose Putty. If the unit happens to have a leak, it would be a different treatment altogether. But since most are just paint bubbles and some caused by drillings and the removal of adhesive hooks, we only need to cover it two to three times of wall putty to even out the surface and some damaged corners. The next step is to sand the excess to smoothen the surface in preparation for painting. I'm using here a medium 100 grit sandpaper. Before painting, I would normally cover outlets, door jams, and window trims. I do this to prevent these parts from being painted and to achieve a more crisp and straight edges. Moving now to painting, we are going to use a variation of a gray paint which I initially test out on the first day. I believe Sherwin-Williams color of the year is called agreeable gray. It's somehow similar to it and since we don't have that here in the Philippines, I went for Davis Silver Screen in Satin Finish, which is kind of similar in tone. It's like a combination of gray beige, or some would call it grayish. As you can see here, I prefer doing this approach by painting the edges first with brush. This way, it will be easier and faster for me to paint the entire wall later. You may also opt to do the opposite if that is more of your style and approach. We are going to be repainting the entire unit with gray except for the bathroom which I opt to paint with white. To cover the existing yellowish paint, I needed to apply at least 3 coats of paint. Before, I would use a bigger polyester roller brush so it would be faster for me to get the job done. But I noticed that the texture once it dries up is a bit coarse so I experimented and what I did is use it on the first coating 
and then the foam option of the roller on the second and third coat resulting to better finish and refined texture. This specific shot was taken in the afternoon at around 3 p.m. and the paint looks perfect here reflecting the light coming in from the windows. Gray would make the bathroom dark and since it's enclosed and there's no window for the natural light to come in, I went for white for the entire bathroom for a much fresher and airy look. In preparation for the backsplash installation, I needed to remove this counter gap cover for our backsplash to sit directly into the countertop which will double as our gap cover. We won't be replacing the existing countertop and cupboards but instead we are just adding some elements to upgrade it and make it more functional and cohesive with the entire space. For our cupboards, I will be covering this with a waterproof contact paper in white, creating a two-tone kitchen cabinet. I am rushing to cover the part facing the bathroom or at least its bottom part before Asibar installs the backsplash for the termination between the cupboards and backsplash to look nice and clean. Ten days after we start the whole renovation process, things are getting more exciting because today our first batch of furniture arrived and so far we are progressing on time. I would like to give a shout out to Kuya Rainier's team who I entrust to pick up and deliver most of our furniture ever since I started Studio Ploy. The following day, Asibar came in to install our bathroom glass enclosure and kitchen backsplash. This was actually the only wish list for the bathroom aside from repainting the walls. Everything else I added them to improve the overall aesthetic of the bathroom. For the backsplash, originally the material for it was tile but most design that would fit our theme are out of stock. So I went for tempered glass in gray to add interesting element and overall would enhance and make the kitchen area cohesive with the overall style of this space. We are now getting more closer to the exciting part as we are now starting to assemble some of the major furniture. I was so excited that I went on installing some of the recently delivered furniture instead of finishing back covering our cupboards. I went for this tulip table for two reasons, its shape and structure. The space for the dining is kinda awkward that a rectangular or square table would eat up space and would make the flow restricted. The provision for our TV console was at the wall that divides between the bedroom and the living area but it would be a waste of that wall since it is perfect in creating our focal point and I wanted the big furniture to be properly distributed instead of putting it all in one side. I instead place it on the space between the column and the window and we are lucky enough because there is also outlet on that side. Though the space is tiny, an IKEA PS cabinet would still fit on that area, which is perfect because of its simple design. Plus, I find it sturdy and very functional. Also, underneath it is a cord outlet, plus it'll definitely add to the storage space. Yeah. 
Then I went back covering the rest of the kitchen cabinets with our waterproof contact paper that I got very affordably from Lazada. This is my simple solution in making the kitchen look more upgraded for less since we are not replacing it with some new and expensive modular cabinetry. I have to move back the wardrobe after the painting is done for the bedroom so I'll have enough space to move around. If you notice, one side of the bedroom wall was not painted the same color as the rest of the bedroom. This is because we are going to create an accent wall on that part. Similar to our inspiration from our mood board, I will be creating a dark colored accent wall with lime wash paint in charcoal black. The lime wash I'm using here needs to be mixed with water and binder then continuously mixing it for 8 minutes before application. It says in the instruction to do upward and downward stroke but I went freestyle. This entire wall will be covered with lime wash creating as our accent headboard wall. After the first coat, I actually don't like the result as brush strokes looks unnatural. But I like that it binds well and I thought since it has this muddled chalky texture that it would stick to my hands, but it did not. We'll see on the second to the third coat if it would look better, otherwise I'll definitely change to a different material. I planned my next application by applying it horizontally to make it look even. After three coats, the pattern looked organic and way nicer than our first and second coat. Then I went on creating some faux paneling with dark gray paint and frog tape by creating vertical gaps to complete and enhance the overall look. My idea for the wall is to appear it's as if cladded with special material with a suede-like texture. The following day, the accent wall is completely dry so I can finally start assembling this queen-size bed frame. The owner requested for queen with a specific budget. Our choice was a grey tufted bed and this one. I went for this because of its color. A grey bed would definitely fit our grey theme but it would look flat together with our grey walls, especially our accent wall, hence the decision to go for this bed frame. Before I start doing some DIYs, we are going to visit IKEA for some last minute shopping. I have to purchase now the mattress, some faux plants, and other accessories. For this project, majority of the plants are going to be artificial since the owner often visit the unit and since it's also be for rental and it would be easy to maintain. These Fishka artificial potted plant would look really nice. I was really torn in choosing between Weeping Fig and Magnolia but I ended up getting this 9 foot Magnolia as it looked more real and would definitely look good in our living area. The chocolate's not going to be part of the accessories but part of my diet. Finally, I was able to get this mattress as it's been sold out most of the time. 
Previously, I would get mattress from Landmark, but their delivery schedule would be beyond our scheduled date to turn over. So I looked for other options and took the chance in getting it from IKEA. I was actually really keen on getting the mattress from IKEA because with our previous mattress, it has a little gap with our frame of about an inch or two, probably because of a different sizing standards. Moving to our first DIY, since the bathroom looks really plain and dull, I decided to create a mini vertical garden using faux plants and picture frames from IKEA. This is really easy. All you need to do is to fit the faux plant to the frame, then secure it using hot glue. I also make sure that some leaves would pop out from the frame so it would look natural. We are going to place this above the toilet bowl. Our next DIY is this two-tone plant stand using IKEA's Mammoth Stool and black and white spray paint. This was actually part of a recent DIY video that I posted. You may check out the link below for the video. The third DIY project is my favorite. It's an aesthetic stool made of two salad bowl joined together and a cement tray lid. It looks so good and at the same time multifunctional. Our fourth DIY project is this plant pot that I upcycled and make it look like an old ceramic plant pot using lime wash paint similar to what we used for the accent wall. Last but certainly not the least is our nightstand that I created out from Eket cabinets and some furniture legs. Before the gallery wall, I had to also cover this wardrobe with white contact paper to make it look more cohesive with the space. I actually like the dark oak veneer cabinetry, but its tone is too strong for the space and painting it is out of option. I wanted to keep that option of reverting it back to the original laminated wood by easily peeling off the contact paper. I also replaced the original aluminum hardwares to this modern vintage looking black candles for that perfect contrast. Originally intended to be installed beside the sofa, but since the wall is made of gypsum board that it will not hold the slab and would only damage it in the long run. And since we don't have pendant lighting on top of our dining, I thought of trying it beside the dining and it actually looked nice and intimate. I always love creating a gallery wall as it completes an interior by adding style and character to a space. It is a very timeless and traditional way to display a collection or portray your personality. This wall was originally the space for the TV area but I thought it would be the best focal point for the living so instead I reoriented and placed the sofa on this side and what a better way to spruce up the wall easily and affordably by creating a gallery wall. I'll be using here 6 30 by 40 centimeters rib of black frames from IKEA. The templates you're seeing on the wall are the backing paper of the contact paper we used for the cabinetry. Template helps in eliminating errors because you can easily adjust it before placing the screw. I wanted our frames perfectly aligned with each other including its side view by making sure the length of the protruding screw uniform. Music 
before I would normally print photos more than the frames and I have to mix and match them before hanging. I found a simple solution of rearranging the photos first on Melanode to visualize the outcome and adjust photos to make it more cohesive before printing. It lessens the work on the ground and altogether reduces expenses. I always make sure that every details that we incorporate here has meaning. So for these photos, I thought of taking actual shots of the property. I also design and add some digitally designed art reflecting the owner's interest or even their initials. I always loved doing paintings and artworks and ever since I started Studio Ploy, I would incorporate at least one or two of my customized artwork in every project, whether it is commissioned or as a gift to the owner. I felt like it enhances the space. It actually became a Studio Ploy signature. This space is no exception. For this first artwork, I decided on creating a large version of a Lego brick out of canvas and center board and painted it over with acrylic. Next is this abstract painting that I actually don't know what to name at first as I just do random strokes and when I finally able to place it on frame, I gave her a name, Luna. There was no request for a vanity area and there's too much negative space in front of the bed that makes it too plain and boring. So I actually just initiated adding this mirror to this column beside the window and it adds a whole lot of vibe to the space. That it became one of my favorite spot in the bedroom. Adding in a refreshing element to the bathroom with this DIY mini vertical garden out of picture frame and artificial plants. Since we are not doing ceiling works to create dramatic lightings, I usually replace the typical bulb with a better lighting fixture that would look more cohesive with the entire space. A simple flash mounted would be the best option. For the living, I wanted the vertigo lamp that would accentuate the living and would go perfectly with the style of the space. But since it's too expensive, I looked for options and found the similar looking pendant lamp that they call Bella from Lucendi. For the pendant lamp, I would normally hang it 6 feet from the floor. But for this unit, the floor to ceiling height is 2.65 meters or around 104 inches. I adjusted the height a little higher at 6.5 feet because the owner of this unit is quite tall. I am so excited for you guys to see the final result of this renter friendly renovation. But before that, I'd like to show you my favorite part the accelerating part of the makeover, the styling.
Finishing this makeover was quite a ride as we have gone through in between setbacks and challenges leading to its completion and yet with God's grace I was able to deliver on time. I hope I did not disappoint in my humble commitment to reconfigure and making the unit more attractive and pleasing to renters while preserving and blending the owner's personality in it. Lastly, I am very grateful for the trust reposed in me and for believing in my vision for the unit that I could effectively create and blend comfort, aesthetic, and practicality all in one. As I would always say, here at Studio Ploy, it doesn't take much to create and transform spaces into your dream cozy place. I would like to thank Melanote for sponsoring today's video. And to everyone, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.